Iron Maiden, No Prayer for the Dying. Ten tracks, 44 minutes. The eighth studio in the UK have metal band released October 1990 by EMI and Epic, produced by Martin Birch, recorded at Barnyard Studios in England, which is Steve Harris's little shack. Um, two singles were released, Holy Smoke and Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. The album peaked number two in the UK, number 17 in the US, and again charted well across the globe, going platinum in Canada as well as gold in both the US and UK. This album sees the first lineup change to the band in eight years with Adrian Smith departing to be replaced by Yannick Gers. Uh, even though this album met with mixed to negative reviews and copped a ban from the BBC, <laughs> this album does have the band's only number one single in the UK in <laughs> Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. Go for it. Jesus. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yep, that's true. Not my favourite Maiden album. Probably. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the worst one. Uh, are you a big fan? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's not as good as their previous works. Yeah, like. coming off Seventh Sun and also what Fear of the Dark coming after it, this really mm. seems like an album full of filler. Um, I think Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter is the ultimate low point for this band. I think it's one oh, of the wow. worst songs they've ever done. Okay. It's an absolute tragedy. Um, Tail Gunner and Holy Smoke. Tail Gunner opens the album okay. Holy Smoke is just too damn tacky mm. it really did seem they were reaching for chart success with that one and even yeah. though they might have got a bit of it um, I don't think you should really do it at the expense of all your loyal fans and I feel that's kind of what they've done with some of these tracks um, <clears throat> they hit a bit of a flat spot in their career in general at this point yeah. in time yeah it was pretty short lived I think Fear of the Dark was much stronger than this mm. but um, still I mean geez, they were coming off some lofty heights through that they were the, the golden they were always going to come down yeah um, so look, not one of my favourites. It's not hideous. It's not something I you know turn off and or anything. But it's not something I would you know put on in the car and listen to the whole album either. No, the um, turning off comes later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I'll give it a five out of ten. Highlights, Christ. I can't think of one. <laughs> <laughs> Follow that up. I'm winging it. But um, this yeah. one. When I first discovered Maiden, it was just before this album came out, so this was the first new release that I ever listened okay. to. It's like, oh, cool, new material. Um, when you're 10 years old or whatever age it was, it was all pretty cool. When you get a bit more objective and you heard the other stuff that they've released, it is a bit of a letdown overall. Mm. Um, I know that the cycle of Right Record Tour must have been taken its toll by this time. They mm. did seem a bit tired throughout this album. And I know they wanted to go back to basics after the full onslaught that they did with Seventh Son. Mm. But <clears throat> there is a lot of low points throughout this. Um, like you said, it does open up pretty cool. Tail Gunner. Mm. Holy Smoke, I like. It's a lot of fun. It's taking the piss mm. out of the TV evangelist. And around this time, a lot of bands were doing that. He had Ozzy yeah. doing it with Miracle Man and Suicide yeah, Tendencies yeah, with true. Send Me Your yeah. Money. So <clears throat> it was that whole irony of the guy who's campaigning against metal and burning all the CDs who yeah. actually getting found in the hotel room with like five prostitutes or whatever. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> if you're sticking it to religion, it's Good times. <laughs> Um, apart from that, there's great songs, but you'd probably just go to a live album from around this tour, probably the Donington mm. release. Yeah, it's it's got probably, probably the best actually. parts of this. Mm. I'd probably grab that before this. Um, I do like The Assassin. That is a cool song. Mm. And um, I do like Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. Really? Yeah. 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 It's fun. Oh, okay. And, you know, <laughs> it was um, released with Nightmare on Elm Street 5, and I'm a huge horror fan, so... Okay. Metal and horror together was always cool. It's been a for the time record, time. Brendan, that Bring Your Daughter song was probably the one that survived this in the live set for the longest time as well. Mm. So It's cool. I've yeah. seen them live, I reckon, five times. I reckon I've ever heard them play it. No? I don't think no. I've heard them play it either. It All did right. stay for a while, I thought, yeah. but anyway. Yeah. Pretty sure it did. Anyway. <coughs> well, yeah, one single makes sense, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I'll give it six. But, um, yeah, Tail Gunner, Holy Smoke, The Assassin, and Bring Your Daughter. Yeah. Okay. okay, so... um. This album saw them moving on from their concept album kind of phase, mm. um, and they tried to go back to their more raw, grounded style. Bruce on this uses a much more dirtier, more gravelly mm. approach to his uh, voice, um, which takes a bit to get used to, and to be honest, 28 years on, I still haven't. Um, <laughs> I'm not a fan of this album. Fuck, it's uh, a long right, time to think about it, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> widely panned as the worst of the Bruce Dickinson uh, era Maiden records, and I'm not going to say anything here to change that opinion at all. Um, <laughs> Look, the only tracks that I'm kind of okay with, um, Holy Smoke, but that's only because of that film clip. It's a fantastic film mm, clip, but that's, you know, yeah, shit song, good film clip, so yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> run, and look, no, these are Run Silent, Run Deep. I've got that. That's a decent track. It's passable. Um, there are section, some sections a bit over the top, but I can live with that one. The rest of the album is pretty much gets a skip from me. Um, 
most of, most of the other songs on here are either you know very bad to terrible, uh, with, and look all <laughs> mediocre. And I'll, I'll give dishonourable mentions to these ones. Um, dishonourable, yeah, okay. dishonourable mentions. Public Enema number one because of that shitty pardon the pun title. Fucking crap. Um, I know Dave loved the song Assassin, uh, Fate's Warning. So good song if you're a prog metal band, but a shit song if you're an Iron Maiden. So, um, and Mother Russia, that, that's five minutes of the worst verbal diarrhea you ever going to fucking hear. Yeah, you know, I wasn't a big fan of that one. Yeah, yeah. it's, um, yeah. what this album made me realise is just how bloody integral Adrian Smith was to this band. Yeah, no, that's, well. that's actually very um, true. Because what Iron Maiden did the almost impossible early in the career where they replaced Deanna with Duke Dickinson, and everyone knows replacing a front man for another front man, that's very hard to pull off, but they did it. And they came out the other end. Very they, few you know, survived it. Yeah. yeah. They came out the other end and went on to much bigger and better things. Um, but replacing, I think, Smith was just a bridge too far for them. And it really mm. shows on this um, album. Because, um, I mean, if you think about it, he's the only missing element. I mean, you've got Yannick Gears that comes in, but Smith just, yeah, it's just too much of a loss for me. Mm. Um, so, yeah, look, for me, there's really no, there's really no standout tracks on this album for me. Um, the least bad are really Holy Smoke and Run Silent, Run Deep. Um, Give it five. I'm giving it five out of ten, only because it's Maiden, and I can't give him four. <laughs> it's Maiden. Sorry, it's Maiden with Bruce, and I can't give him four. Uh, I was about to say, <laughs> hang on, there's uh, another one yes. coming up. Yeah, we haven't gotten to. Um, for me, this one's a bit of a shift. The writing, performance, and production have all moved on from the previous records. It's more straight ahead and stripped back. Different solos and rhythms were used on this one as well. It's it's a straight ahead kind of listen. Mm. Production is pretty good. It suits this well. It's a minimalist approach. Uh, just capture, mix, and release. Uh, yeah. Everything to that end is recorded really nicely. The mix is pretty even. Just different things jumping to the front at different times, all presented with a neat balance. Yeah. Uh, music that have gone for a much more straight ahead, almost groove-based mm. writing and performance approach. It's not as flashy mm. as the no. previous records at all. And the vocals are a big point of difference. Like you were saying, Bruce still sounds like Bruce, but the wailing has been swapped out in favour of grittier vocals overall. Yeah. Even profanity here for the first time in a long time. <laughs> like, mm. Yeah, like... Not that I'm against that by at the, all. By the listener or the band? <laughs> um, both, actually. Um, especially you, I think. Um, but there are little bits that directly reference previous works. The title track is a case in point for that. I think yeah, it just re- re- references previous stuff. Yeah. I do like the drum sound of this. The I like the real sound they have as though they were just recorded in a big old band room. That's that's really cool. In this one. It's got a, a sound we haven't associated with the band until now, and that works well. But notice I'm talking about production more than musicianship yeah. and songs at this point in time. Solos are less flashy, but they've certainly still got the chops. Um, this one, it feels like they've tried to go back to the street a little bit, almost back to the Deano kind of era mm, yeah. a touch. It, yeah. It's got some aggression in there as well, which you haven't really had for a while. It's not terrible, not at all, but I get the feeling they're sliding and they're also trying to keep up with the times. Mm. And they're always going to come down after the previous heights. Um, yeah. And we've, all, we've discovered over the years of doing this that almost every artist has struggled during this period of time mm. that came before this. This era for older metal bands, yep. Yep. fucking flat spot and a half. Mm. And, and Iron Maiden didn't survive it either. Yeah. They didn't get out unscathed. It, it, nothing... Bad overall, but nothing totally engaging either. It feels a little bit forced, generic, and a bit one dimensional overall as a listen. The backing vocals were another big difference. That almost feels all inspired by ACDC, like the way they mm. came oh. through, which is a. This all sounds. When you listen to yourself talking about yeah. it, it sounds like a very different Iron Maiden. That's that's what, assassins yeah. could actually be on the race's edge. Yeah, yeah. that's that kind of what you. Yeah. yeah, and that's just kind of what you. Smith used to do all the backing vocals, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, well, yeah, and so it all sort of starts. That's the reason, up. doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Just like in that flash one, and you look forward to from this band. I like the uh, the different scales and modes being used in the guitar, though. So you miss Adrian Smith, but what Yannick brings is a bit of a different flavour to it. You just got to get used to it yeah. after a while, which happens as the albums progress later on. And like you were saying, I think they were aiming for the radio a bit, and mm. it didn't come off. Uh, the single hooks you in, and it, that reeks of that, like the bring it out of the slaughter. It, it reeks of trying to get you to mm. to listen to it on the radio. Um, sorry, no hooks. Hooks in you. Hooks in you. That's it. Sorry, it's fucking whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, hooks in you. That that one. Mm. That was what I saw right there. Um, the other single album, Daughter of the Slaughter, is a belter of a song, and you can see why that one resonated. Mm. That one resonated with the audience better than Hooks in You, and it's yeah. it's why it was the number one single mm. at the time as well. It's got the right time for that sort of punk and attitude and darkness, and but I think overall in the album they were stretching too far. Mm. Uh, they've gone for something punchier and while they got that it doesn't sit completely right it doesn't feel like a natural progression then it feels like more like a, a hard turn mm. and it doesn't yeah. doesn't sit right 
Still an Iron Maiden, but it's easy to see why this one gets overlooked. Uh, it's worth listening to. It's not a bad album. It's just a long way from the heights we've already explored. 7 out of 10. Bring your daughter to the, spl- bring your daughter to the slaughter. No prayer for the dying and run silent, run deep in life standouts. Check it out for yourselves. Let us know what you think.